In this video, we're talking about port security, and we're talking about the physical port security, the ports that are on the switches and devices inside of your environment. That's because once you get inside of your environment where you can physically plug into a jack on the wall or physically plug into equipment, it's generally much less secure than if you are outside of the organization. It's because security components cost a lot of money, and it becomes very, very difficult to spread that security across every single device in your organization. You'll find that whether you're plugging into copper, whether you're connecting to a wireless network, or maybe even a fiber-based connection, it's all a connection to your network. And you can generally, when you plug in one place, access other parts of the organization internal to your organization. And if you're wireless, obviously, you don't even need to be in the building. You don't even need to be inside physically your organization. You may be outside in the parking lot. You may be on a different floor of the building and still be inside of your network. There is almost a, too easy to plug into your network. I walk into conference rooms all the time where they give me a network connection and I'm on their network. And it may still be a guest network, but it's obviously gaining access to a part of their infrastructure. And sometimes they've they built a completely different set of switches and routers and connections just for their guest network. And that's really one of the best ways you can go about separating that off. Or they put other things in place to make sure you would only gain access to the network if you were given certain credentials. But very often, you don't need credentials. I simply plug in and I'm on the network. And that's probably something we don't want to have happen when we're inside of these organizations. One way to restrict access is to limit what machines are able to access the network. And a common way to do this is through MAC filtering or MAC limiting. This is, stands for Media Access Control. This is the physical interface that's on your wireless card, on your Ethernet card, and it identifies that single piece of hardware. And generally, all of your cards have different addresses on them. The only time there might be a duplicate MAC address is if there was a mistake with the manufacturer of the card, which does occasionally occur or you happen to have somebody spoofing a MAC address of that. Uh, to be able to manage all of this, then you need the access, the MAC access control list of every device. You need their MAC address. So you'd have to go to all of the different devices on your network and define filters inside of your network devices to say, only these machines have access to this physical network. It's just another layer of security you can add on top of this. One of the challenges, and I've already mentioned this, is that MAC addresses can be easily spoofed. If I know what one of those MAC addresses is today, I can go into my operating system, into the driver of my network card, and tell it that I don't want to be the normal hardware address. I'm going to pretend to be this address, which is going to match someone else in your organization and go right through the filters and the limits that you have in place. If you have network access control in your environment, then you're using the 802.1x protocol. You can avoid a lot of these security concerns because you have the ability to restrict whether you're connecting through copper or fiber or wireless or anything. Before anybody can connect to the network, they must go through our normal authentication process with 802.1x to be able to gain access to the network. This means that I don't have to worry so much about the wireless users, and I don't have to worry so much about the Mac filtering and the Mac spoofing, because even if they gain access to the network, they find our web or our WA keys, they uh, get a MAC address that gains access to the network, they still have to authenticate properly. And we can require not just usernames and passwords. We may also require security tokens. We might also require additional authentication on top of that. So 802.1x becomes a very, very good way to restrict access regardless of how people gain physical access to our network. Another thing you can do as a best practice is to disable any ports that aren't currently in use. Disable ports that are in cubes where nobody is at the moment. Maybe there are offices where nobody is in that office. There's nobody moved in. So let's make sure that port is physically turned off. That way, if I went into that empty cube or that empty office and plugged in my system, I still would not have access to that network. So don't just rely on 802.1x. Also put some physical limitations in place. Obviously, this requires some additional maintenance. It requires a separate process. When somebody needs to have a port turned on, there needs to be a process so that you're making sure you turn on the correct port. And you need to have a process so that if somebody moves out of a cube, they move out of an office, there's also a process to turn that port off. Otherwise, turning on and off ports is really going to be worthless 
because I can still walk into that room and be able to plug in. And you may have to do constant checks on this, constant maintenance, and make sure that the ports that you have turned on are really in use. So you'll want to do periodic reviews, look at your management console for your switch, look through the reports of who's moved in and who's moved out, and make sure that you're not allowing people access to the network that really should not be there.